Hello, uh, my name is Agam Lakterrefe. Uh, today I'm going to present uh, our work on uh, the entropy of written afanormu. This, this work was conducted by my colleague Dr. Dereja Ilanwariam and Ms. Kalkidan Dejene. We have organized our presentations into six subsections where we will give first give the introduction to the Afanoromo language and then we present why we need to study the entropy and after that we present uh, backgrounds in relation to entropy estimation and entropy based uh, encoding techniques and after that we'll present uh, the methodology followed for this uh, research and finally we'll conclude our presentation using uh, the results and the summary and conclusions of our studies. The Afan Oromo uh, is the language of the Oromo people, which is spoken by the largest uh, group population group of Ethiopia, uh, where the speakers range up to 35% of the total population, that is according to the Ethiopian 2007 uh, population census. In addition to this, the Afan Oromo is spoken in some part of uh, East African regions. In terms of uh, the writing system, the Afanoromo utilizes uh, Kobe, which is a Latin-based alphabet, uh, alphabet, and the germination of these uh, Latin alphabets, where a germination indicates uh, the doubling of consonants and vowels uh, to emphasize or to indicate on the emphasis of uh, phonemes and sounds in, 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 in the Afanoromo. For instance, here we have presented an example, uh, Dame, which, is, which represents to, uh, which corresponds to sweet potato in English. And you can see within the dummy you have uh, two uh, consonant vowels and uh, consonant letters and uh, two uh, vowels being repeated to emphasize on uh, the A and A sounds. In general, we have uh, organized the Afanoromo Kobe uh, in, in figure one. You can, you can see different repetitions of the consonant in vowel sounds and which also corresponds to uh, uh, emphasis given to sounds when, when you speak the Afanoromo language. So the next question is why do you need to study uh, the Afanoromo? Well, today most of the things are digital and uh, the Afanoromo uh, has to be represented in the digital realm in some manner. Uh, in this regard, uh, the Afanoromo is represented by the ASCII 7 or 8-bit encoding systems. And these encoding techniques assume that the language has, uh, uh, the language symbols has a sense of independence and uh, they are ideally distributed. However, uh, when you make such assumptions, uh, it's not always efficient uh, for uh, most digital sources. For instance, in the Afanoromo case, you have 29 symbols, which only needs uh, five bits per symbol with the assumption of such uh, IID distributions or fixed language encodings. So to better understand uh, the impact of uh, such encodings in, in, in the real world, let us consider this SMS message where we have presented an Afanoromo text. And this text uh, utilizes 148 bytes if it is encoded using ASCII 8. And this 148 bytes corresponds to two SMS messages, which will cost you around 1.40 Ethiopian per. However, uh, if you look at the message, there are a lot of uh, repetitions, which uh, indicates that if you have a proper encoding, you can avoid such redundant transmissions and you can, uh, you can minimize the cost uh, requirement in the storage requirement for the language. However, to better understand or to devise such encoding techniques, first you need to have uh, a knowledge of its entropy, where an entropy of a language indicates uh, the optimal number of bits that is needed to represent uh, a given language in the digital layer without any loss of transmission. Uh, in this aspect, information theory presents uh, three uh, approaches that you can follow uh, to estimate the entropy of a language. Uh, the first thing that you need to perform is model the source with appropriate source models, and you need to have uh, an entropy measurement technique. And finally, you can uh, you need to deploy uh, an entropy-based encoding so that you can encode the language in the digital realm so that it has a repeat requirement that is very close to the entropy of the language. In terms of source modeling, you can have two possibilities for natural language. That is, you can use morphological models and statistical models, where a morphological model requires you to have a better understanding of uh, the grammar and the semantics of the language, whereas a statistical model only requires you to have uh, the statistics or the probabilities of symbols of the language. But you, that's not only thing you need to have in statistical language models. You need to have a proper model. 
And in this regard, uh, most uh, literatures propose uh, to model uh, natural languages in Markovian chess. This is evident in most uh, TV game shows. Uh, for instance, you are, there are TV game shows that are based on asking uh, a player to guess the occurrence of a, a, a given letter given uh, some, some uh, pre-known uh, letters. And this indicates that uh, natural languages by nature are Markovian chain, which states that the occurrence of an n symbol is dependent on the previous n minus one symbols. But uh, this by itself does not give you a full picture on the relation between uh, probability of uh, occurrence and a number of bits. And to better understand this, let us consider this example where we have here presented a source with three symbols, which uh, probability of 0 0.5, 0 0.3, and 0 0.2. And if you have a knowledge of this probability, and if you are asked to guess which letter is going to come out of this source, obviously the first guess, your first guess would be A1 because it has the highest probability. And if you are saying no, it's not A1, then you would guess A2, and then you would guess A3. So if you if you plot these guesses using a tree. And if you answer your questions A1 and A2, yes and yes and no, and if you correlate these yes and no's to ones and zeros, it will tell you the number of bits that is needed for a given symbol. For instance, here A1 only requires a single bit, and the rest would require two bits. This indicates you uh, the correlation of probability of occurrence or uncertainty with number of bits. Shannon identified this correlation and stated that uh, the number of bits required for a given symbol has a logarithmic relationship with the inverse of its probability. And Shannon formalized or generalized this, uh, this mathematical uh, interpretation using the self-entropy or H, which states that the average, in, the average number of bits per symbol required for a given natural language is given by uh, this equation. However, in practice, natural languages are not uh, independent or does not have a sense of independence between symbols. To this end, uh, Shannon defined two additional uh, entropy uh, estimation techniques, that is the conditional and the block entropies, which uh, requires the joint and the conditional property distributions of uh, symbols within the language. Moreover, Shannon also established a correlation between the conditional entropy F of N and the block entropy G of N using the formula uh, given here. And also, he also showed that conditional entropy is always less than uh, the block entropy. And Shannon's uh, uh, student also identified that uh, there could be entropy-based encoding techniques such as Huffman. And these techniques could at least approach the entropy within, within a very, a very small range. For instance, the Huffman encoding uh, can range from H to H plus one of the entropy, whereas the arithmetic can range from H to H plus over N, where N is the number of total symbols you have within the language. So with this understanding, the next thing we asked ourselves is how can we estimate the entropy? And we literally identified uh, three techniques. Here we mentioned two. The first one is the Shannon guessing game, which uh, requires uh, to have a language speaker guess the occurrence of a letter given n minus one previous letters, and then later correlate the correct and the false, uh, the incorrect guesses with the occurrence of uh, symbols. But this is cumbersome and uh, tedious, so we avoided this approach and we tried to estimate the entropy using a corpora that is written by Afan Romo. In general, the procedure we follow is we take a corpora and then first we make the block entropy estimation from the corpora by taking uh, window size of n and then we count the occurrence of symbols or blocks of symbols within the window throughout the literature and we assign this to be the probability of uh, that block and we identify different blocks and then we compute the block entropy using Shannon equations and after estimating the block equation we estimated the conditional entropy from the block entropy we iterate over this process until we reach uh, the zero crossing point which indicates the proper modeling of uh, the language. Or that implies the zero, the zero crossing implies that you are given the n block size, you are fully certain that a given symbol will occur if you model it up to that uh, point. In general, uh, the window uh, formally, the window approach that we followed uh, is this one where 
we take a block of symbols and then we count uh, the occurrence of the symbols and we slide the window throughout the literature to identify uh, different uh, blocks of symbols within the literature. To meet uh, these requirements in a practical sense, we have used uh, optical character recognition softwares, which helped us to extract uh, texts from PDFs and uneditable formats. And also we have used Python's text processing package to perform the frequency count and the entropy estimation. In terms of uh, the literatures, we have collected 10 literatures, which uh, span a range of topics from religious to politics up to uh, scientifics. And also we have a very huge corpora, which is extracted from the Oslo Text Laboratory, which consists of a range of uh, texts written in Avanoro. Using these uh, literatures, we estimated the block entropy of the Afanoromo, and we identified that if we model uh, the Afanoromo uh, with the assumption of fixed length encoding and that each symbols are equally probable, you would need around 7.99 or 8 bits. Whereas if you assume that if symbols are independent, but they have their own uh, probability of distribution, then you would at least, at least need 4.35 bits. And when we increase the block size, uh, the bit requirement is minimized because what you see here should be divided by the block size. For instance, for a block size of one, for a block size of 10, you would need 1.6 uh, bits per symbol. Then we have extended this estimation up to a block size of 20. Then we, see, we saw a sense of convergence starting from block uh, 11. And we have also conducted uh, the same experiment uh, on, on the conditional entropies using the estimations made on, on the block entropies. And we have also uh, formalized these, uh, uh, gra graphed these uh, estimations to see if they converge because they are extracted from different uh, topics. And we see that the language uh, starts to, the estimation of the entropy starts to converge starting from a block size of Five. Most of them, they uh, lay around uh, 16.5. The same thing also happened for the conditional entropies, where the estimation started to converge to zero, indicating that the source is being modeled properly as the block size increases, or as the Markovian chain has, uh, gets a knowledge of uh, n minus one, more n minus one symbols, it starts to capture the statistics of uh, or the, the grammatical structure of uh, the language better. So using this understanding, we the first thing we did is we extracted the zero crossing point, which indicates the proper modeling of the language. And this zero crossing point occurred at a block size of 19. At this point, the conditional entropies approached zero up to two uh, significant digits. And the corresponding uh, block entropies of these uh, uh, conditional entropy values are extracted in table 16. And most of them uh, have a corresponding block size of 19 and an average block size of 19.5, whereas the zero crossing point uh, occurred at 16.68 uh, bits per block. And by using this relationship, we computed the entropy of the language to be 0 0.85 bits per symbol in average. And this computation also helped us to compute the redundancy or within the language. And we have identified that the Afanoromo has a redundancy of 89.36%. That is, you can represent Afanoromo using only 10% of the binary representations. And we have also supported this estimation using entropy-based encoding techniques. Uh, here we have used the Huffman in arithmetic encoding, and the Huffman, is con the Huffman experiment is conducted from block size of 1 to a block size of 5. And you can see that uh, the Huffman uh, compression was able to compress uh, the literatures uh, from an average value of 42.70% to 64.88% whereas the arithmetic uh, compression is, 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 able, is able to perform a block one compression, and that uh, achieved an average compression of 35.55. In general, uh, when we conclude our, our, our estimations, we identified that the Afanoromo only need 0 0.85 bits per symbol at the zero crossing point, and it has a redundancy of 89.36%. And it will, we have also showed that it is possible to compress a normal from 42% to 64%. Uh, percent. 
and this indicates a cost transmission time and storage space required a reduction that has a factor of four. Uh, finally, we have also identified a possible scenario that could be that could use the estimations uh, uh, obtained within within our research. And one possible scenario, one possible application scenario would be to deploy Android and iOS-based applications that would compress a panorama for its cost-efficient transmission. And another alternative would be to deploy a language-specific compression technique that would ensure uh, an efficient storage of the panorama in the digital array. Given the large population in Ethiopia who speak uh, the language, obviously this uh, approach would bring uh, a better utilization of digital resources within within uh, within the realms of Afanoroma. Thank you for your time and if you have any questions we are happy to answer.